What's going on lads, AV414 here, and welcome to the start of the FIFA 16 career mode on my channel. We're gonna start today, and I haven't really cut much out of the footage that I'm gonna be doing. Crystal Palace, as you know, won the vote, if you've been keeping up with the straw poll song, they're the team I'm gonna be doing, close behind the Borussia Dortmund, but whoever won, I obviously did, and that is gonna be Crystal Palace. Um... What else was I going to say? This is not really cut out that much. I'm going to leave in most of it. All I'm going to be doing this episode is going through everything, showing you guys what we're working with um, money-wise, squad-wise, who I'm deciding to sell, and who I'm deciding to invest in. So we're going to be looking at um, who's going to be starting, who's going to be on the bench, and um, who's going to be like the best key player and who's going to get the least playing time. So it's going to be a really, really fun series, and Crystal Palace are a really, really fun team to do it with. This is a team I've come up with... Um, Nothing, nothing really too different to the usual Crystal Palace side, but I have made a few adjustments in who I want to sell and keep. Start off up top, the big man, Connor Wickham. I think I, I wanted to stay with him over Dwight Gale and Patrick Bamford. Probably looking to move on um, Campbell and Apaya. Just because they're pacey doesn't mean you have to keep them. So, yeah, I'm looking to move on those guys. Out on the left, we have... Um, Yannick Bonassi, you want an absolute tank. You've got to look at that five-star skill moves. And also that 87 dribbling, a massive factor in this game. He's going to be one of the best players um, throughout this whole series. Not looking to set him. Still has a few years in him, so I'm looking forward to using him. New signing from Wolf, Bakary Sacco. Absolute power of an effort on him, which is going to be great. He's uh, traditionally a left mid, but I've slotted him into camps. So I think he can do the job there. And also to allow room for our two wingers. And the right wing is actually going to be Wilfred Zahar. And he's an absolute animal look at that really nice speed agility dribbling as well a4 dribbling four star skills and four star weak foot a real ideal winger we then move on to the real anchor in the team guys johan kabai i'm really really looking forward to using this guy i've used this team a lot in kickoff guys and it is really really fun to use very very stable at the back and the attack is extremely fun to use a lot of skills a lot of pace very very enjoyable and definitely you guys should go and try out them out that Johan Kabai there, very similar to Joe Ledley. Joe Ledley does have a few orange stats on him though, not quite as good as Kabai, but they're both very similar and both, I'm looking to hang on to both of them. Not really looking to improve your centre midfield. Uh, position I am looking to improve, as you'll see there, the bench, like we've got a lot of players ready to come in, but a position I am looking to improve is the defence now. It's looking pretty shaky, guys, and if we're going to try and get into... I'm, I'm aiming myself. I think they've sent me a target of finishing mid-table. I'm aiming for myself to finish in the Europa League spot. And if we if we can finish, like, fifth, that would be, the, like, an awesome goal. But I'm not very used to the game, so I think we... Uh, I think between tenth and fifth is basically where we're going to be finishing. Fifth would be awesome. But as you can see in the defence, I've just gone through the two defenders who are probably, like... They're, they're actually really good, like Ward and Dan. Dan not even to move on, of course, the captain, very solid. Delaney has frightening pace on him as well. Pace isn't a big factor in this game. When you have 50 pace, it is. Like, it gets on another level when you have 50 or under. So, yeah, for, um, Delaney not... I think I'm going to keep him and sell Hangerland, but... He's not going to be getting played, and we need to bring in some improvements at the back if we're honest with ourselves, because we need to make improvements in this side, and maybe an attacking sub too, because only Jason Punchin on the bench for um, a right mid, left mid, and a cam is a bit worrying. Left over Soiree, real, real tank, going to be bombing forward. You guys all know about him, how much of a beast he is. And in goal, made a big decision here and going for Alex McCarthy over Julius Veroni now. Julius Veroni, I've decided to move on in this career. Probably a lot of you guys are probably thinking, he's a legend of Crystal Palace, but I need to move money 36, and they've given me the opportunity to sell him. Like He's still available to sell for a decent amount of money. So why not move him on? And if no one picks him up, then I don't think he's going to be getting much playing time at all. Move on to the bench, though. We have Hennessy, Hangeland, Kelly, MacArthur, Punch and Gale, and Patrick Bamford, the loanee from Chelsea. So we're looking pretty solid for the season, but again, a few new a few new tweaks to the side, and we'll be looking very, very strong come the end of the season. We have um, our reserves here, Spironi, Payne, Friars, Kroll, uh, McCarthy, Mariapa, Yedinak, Much, Gray, Lee Chong Young, Shamak, Aaron, Mohammed, Apaya, and Fraser Campbell. Um, all, actually, a few of them are just going to get loaned out, like Aaron, Mohammed. Um, those are the guys that are going to get loaned out. But then there are some really, really old guys like McCarthy 
and Fraser Campbell, who I'm looking to move on. I don't really see them having a future at Crystal Palace and definitely not in my career mode. So we're going to move on to who I think should be sold now. I'm, go I'm going to sort this by position here to show you guys. Start with Hennessy and McCarthy, going to be my two keys for the goal for the season. Payne, going to loan out as Peroni. I'm, of course, going to try and sell for um, just under a million we have Kroll going to get loaned out, um, Dan and Delaney going to keep Hangalan, going to transfer this, as are we going to do in McCarthy. Been on Williams, already loaned out for me, and he actually looks solid when he, come back. when he comes back, he may be able to do a few things. Fries is up for loan, Suarez definitely going to keep, looks like an absolute god, um, really, really nice stats on him there, very balanced. And Hunt, he's already loaned now, he will come back come the end of the season. We have Kelly in... Kelly and Mariapa here. Kelly going to keep as a sub right back. Or could potentially send him later on though. Mariapa on the transfer list. As is going to be Shamat guys I'm afraid to say it. Then we have Johan Kabai, Yedinak. We go through a load of players who aren't actually going to be sold here. I'm trying to, I think the, my centre of midfield is one of the few positions where I don't need to strengthen. Because they're looking really really strong back there. So that is really really sick. Then we have Gray looking to loan out. Because he's very very young. We have Lee Chong Yong going to put on the transfer list. Because... 26 years old, 73 rated, and the wingers we already have are very young and good too, so I'm not looking to sell them, guys. So then we have a pyre, um, and a lot, a lot of strikers, guys. Patrick Bamford, of course, on loan from Chelsea, which is absolutely sick, and he will be a brilliant player in the future. Um, and then Fraser Campbell, of course, as I've already said, I'm looking to sell him. And I'm going to keep three strikers at Wickham, Gale, and Bamford, I really think, guys, because I think they can all do a job. And Gale and Bamford have potential in them, so if we can actually sign Bamford on a full transfer next season, then that would be really, really sick, because, of course, he's only on loan from Chelsea. We then have St. Germain Houste. As I said that the wrong way around, but who cares? That guy, um, he looks really good. All of these players I've searched up. Well, not all of them. But a few of these guys, these three really young centre-backs, look awesome in the future, guys. Um, good defending stats on them. And I think they have they have awesome potential, as I've checked on the website, so FIFA. So I'm really looking to pick at least two of them up. Then I have Jose Font and Ashley Williams who are, are, are signings that Crystal Palace are looking to make in real life. And I've thought about it long and hard, and I thought, should I go for experience, or am I just going to think to the future? And with this side, I'm really looking for the future, guys. I think that we have we have a really, really nice balanced out squad here. And with a bit of youth and a bit of freshness at the back, then it can be a complete squad. And it can do big things in the future. So I'm really looking forward to trying to sign some of those young centre-backs. We have Michael Hector, who has, of course, moved to Chelsea in real life. I think we've loaned him back out to Reading, but he have bugged that out and actually accidentally sold him back to Reading, which is a bit of a bug, but I knew if he was up for sale, then I would try and go for him, because he is actually solid, this left back, I'm not going to bother to pronounce, looks really, really good, um, look, look at that name though, guys, if I eventually sign him, I'm not going to be able to say that in the matches, but yeah, he has great potential, and, um, yeah, that's only 18 years old. He can do big things in the future. We have Ivan Lopez and Tete, one from Ajax, one from Levante, one from Spanish League, one from Dutch League. Both looking very good. Two leagues that you can invest in with very, very good young players. And Ajax is a club which you can find real gems. And um, I pick up a few players from Ajax. Well, I don't pick up, but I look at a few players from Ajax. Um, we have Loic Remy, who is actually was actually rumoured last summer, like the summer transfer window, in the summer transfer window, guys, um, to move to Crystal Palace. That would that would have been really, really sick. Imagine if that happened. And 10.5 million, like, I don't think Chelsea are going to let him go for that much, but, yeah, we'll have to wait and see about that one. We have Ajoa, but as I said, I'm happy with my strikers. These are all real goal scorers that Crystal Palace are looking to pick up here in real life such as Charlie Austin and Joey, you know, guys that can stick the ball in the back of the net if you need them to. So, yeah, um, those are the sort of players Crystal Palace have been looking for this season um, because they just want goals, guys, because they're not really doing too much at the moment because I think their squad is a bit too old and what I'm going to do is freshen it up and in my career mode, I think that we're going to have an absolutely insane squad. So we're going to start off by looking at some of the fixtures we have here. We have Norwich in the first match of the Premier League. It'll be interesting to see what lineup I pick for that. It's always a difficult one where um, you get when I mean, you have the first match of the season, you want to play your best players, but like 
it's such a bad team that you don't know if you do. So yeah, well, it'll be interesting what line we play there. Our friendlies, we have some really um, one bad team. I think at the start there, like Galanjo FC or something ridiculous, and then we have two solid teams. So we'll have to see what sort of lineups we play in there and them too. Because I will. That's not my like certain starting eleven, and some of the new signings I make this episode um, are going to feature in those preseason friendlies as well. So. <coughs> Gonna start off here with advancing, of course, get a few inquiries back. Michael Hecht has recently joined Reading, so he's not looking to join us. Tete, 11 million, and Ivan Lopez, um, 7 million. So that's, that's interesting. This St. Juste guy looks absolutely sick, and I actually put in possibly a bit of a tramp offer here of 2.5 million. But we'll see what they say back to it, because if we can pick him up for that amount, 18-year-old with a lot of potential, um, decent muscle pace on him, and good defending stats for that amount, then that would be absolutely sick, of course, guys. We then have this Tete guy who looks really good. We try and place a bid. Uh, we try and place an offer of 5 million for him. And that's the sort of amount I'm looking to get under 5 million or so, unless we have a lot of money to spare then I will have to um, adjust that rule, of course. We then have Ivan Lopez, who they have said they wanted £7 million for, so we again chuck in a £5 million offer and see if we can get that, because that, of course, would be a really, really good deal. So, yeah, if we can get that, then that would be really, really sick for the future. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to picking up a lot of these players, because they all have a lot of potential, and they're all looking really, really good. I'm looking at the defensive stats a lot, because I think that's a big, big thing in FIFA. We come back, and this guy, 15.5 million. Oh, my God. We're going to have to make some exceptions in the transfer budget here, guys. I put in, um, I take 10 million off the um, suggested amount that guys there. Absolutely slice it off. 5.5 million, um... <laughs> bit of a ste bit of a steep offer, but you know we'll have a look to see what happens, and then we have two guys who have recently joined, so we unfortunately can't invest in them this season. But the guys that we can are looking really, really good, guys. I'm looking forward to using a lot of them. Ivan Lopez looks like an absolute god, and that Reed Vald guys, unfortunately, is a bit expensive. But we'll have a look at what we can do. Come back, Kenny Tete, unfortunately, has rejected the offer, so yeah, we're gonna have to try and submit a new one for him, which is a bit of a pain, but we can work with it. So yeah, we straight away put up an offer for Teddy, and there it goes. Perfect, boys. Seven million. See if we can get him for that. We come back with Sent You Stay here. Um, they they they've had enough. They don't want him for two point five. Straight off rejection. So we um add one point five million to the budget, and um yeah, we chuck in a four million bid. But, but let's be honest with ourselves. If we're getting a centre back value valued at six million for uh, for two million cheaper, then it's a win win situation, boys. We then have. Have to advance again, of course, guys. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing straight away, guys. So, we come back, and Jairo Reedveld has unfortunately rejected his bid. So, we straight away go and submit a new offer. It was a bit of a poor poor bid, but this is this is what we're going to be doing for this episode, basically, guys. We've already gone through the squad, and I'm just going to be making a few transfers. Going up to the first preseason matches, and next episode, we will be playing preseason. So, be sure to look forward to that, because that will, of course, be sick. Then we come back, Ivan Lopez has actually accepted, woo, what a deal, uh, we get him for 5 million I believe, which is absolutely sick, I try and sign him on do not specify, you'll have to wait and see what happens with that one, whether he wants to actually know his squad role, but 5 million, that is an awesome deal, we have to accept that, so yeah, that loan offer, 25k a week as well is really solid for a guy who's going to get to around about 83 rated, so, yeah, that's all absolutely sick. They come back saying they want 8.5 for Tete, and considering we've got someone exactly the same quality for 5 million, we're not gonna we're not gonna bid that. So yeah, we straight away take him away. We've actually won another offer, guys. And look at this 5k a week. And we bought this guy for 4 million. So we're making some really, really sick signings so far. There's still 105k remaining on the wage budget. So it's all looking dandy for us and I probably will adjust the wage later on because next episode I'm probably looking to make two more signings and that's going to be down to you guys I want you guys to comment down below young attacking midfielders right wings and left wings even cams if you want but I want you kind of to stick to right wings and left mids right mids left mids so yeah just keep that in your mindset guys because don't forget it I'll probably mention it at the end of the episode too in case you do but yeah I really want you guys to comment because I want you guys to have a bit of an impact on this career mode too just to just for you guys to see how it's going 
So yes, because the support on the channel has been sick. So I'm going to let you guys decide a really, really beast cam. And if no one really leaves any comments that like are acceptable, well, if someone comes like Akin Fenwell for a left mid, who's young and pacey and stuff, then of course I'm just going to have to try and choose on myself. But we get Ivan Lopez, guys, eventually. Um, and we sign him on Do Not Specify as well, which is absolutely awesome, guys. So yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to using him. And we get the new signing arriving. I will do kit numbers at the start of next episode guys because i forgot to do it in this recording a bit of recording guys so we straight away take kelly off and i think i should sell kelly now because he's not going to get any game time because ivan lopez is going to be rotating a lot with ward so yeah kelly's not really going to get many game time <coughs> much game time maybe once or twice in like the capital one cup but not really so yeah ivan lopez is going to be put on the bench for him so yeah i'm really looking forward to using him uh, good pace stats on him as well, the guys. And um, I straight away go and check his defending because that was a massive stat this FIFA. 78 side tackle and 77 stand tackle. So he's looking really, really good this year. This year. So I'm really looking forward to using him, of course, because that would be absolutely awesome if we eventually pick him up. <coughs> and yeah, so just look forward to that, guys. What, what, what am I even talking about? If we eventually pick him up, we are going to pick him up, guys. I'm chatting shit at the moment, but anyway. We straight away go in advance. We get a few final scout reports here. We get um, one on this guy here. We have um, Alessio Romagnoli. So, he's a, he's actually a guy who potentially we are going to get next season. But we do get this guy now. This 18-year-old beef centre-back. So, he straight away is going to go into the squad there. But we've gone for 4 million on 5k a week on and do not specify on, the, on his squad role. So, I'm really looking forward using him another beast player i'll be getting our squad report michael hector which we can go back to in the near future if we want to pick him up if we're in a bit of a center back crisis which it doesn't look like it's going to happen if we're honest with ourselves here because at the moment our score defensive wise is looking really good and i'm actually going to put juice state in the team for delaney because i think we need to look towards the youth and i don't think delaney's going to really fit that caliber of youth so yeah we take him out for st juice state they're both right foot so i'm going to let dan play more on his left foot because let the youngster on his favorite foot so yeah he's going to be a right center back for now unless we get reed valid because i'm pretty sure reed valid is higher rated than st juice state so he's probably going to go in instead of him so yeah that i'm looking forward to using both of those guys nonetheless so that's going to be really, really interesting to see if we eventually pick up any of those players that we're still looking to get. But remember, you guys still have a lot of fate in this career mode because you guys, you guys are going to comment down below a nice, fresh, young right midfielder and left midfielder for me to pick up on the bench. I want a guy with like good potential. I don't have to chuck in all the time. He's not going to want to play 24-7, but he is going to get a, a solid amount of game time. They were again rejected for Reedval, but we do have a lot of money left and a lot of money on the wage, so I can adjust that in the near future. And already on the 13th day, so this is actually looking, this is actually going really well, guys. So I'm looking forward to using some of these guys. Um, they all look beast, don't they, guys? All of these youngsters, I have some really nice centre-backs. And with a sub-attacking midfield, I think our squad is going to be complete. And we can definitely make Europa League squad, uh, Europa League squad, Europa League spot. So yeah, that's going to be awesome. Because in the second season of this career mode, we will be playing Europa League. They come back again with a lot of scout reports. But they have rejected the Reedveld offer. And they now want 12 million for him, which is a bit of a pain. But what we've made a decision to do here is actually offer up 10 million and bread a hangerland. I was wondering when to offer 9 million in hangerland, but I believe I eventually made a decision to offer 10 million. And it, as you'll see how I go and select hangerland, he's quite fun on the bottom actually. And um, yeah, offer 10 million because I really wanted to get this guy. He looks like an absolute tank. And not only that, we're freeing up a lot of wage by getting rid of hangerland, guys, because it's all these old players who get paid a lot, as you can see there. Uh, read about is 75 rate so we probably will go in the starting line instead of send juice day but yeah it's all these um old guys they have a lot of money getting being paid a week so if you can eventually do a swap deal with them then it's a win-win situation because they're not only poor you want to get rid of them from the squad but you are freeing up some of the space too guys so then here we are advancing a bit more. We have um, a few more things to clear up. We have a transfer offer for Patrick McCarthy, which we actually... I was wondering whether to actually put in like a counter offer for him, but I really wanted to get rid of him. He's not going to have any future with the club, so I'm straight away listed. I'm just going to accept that offer of 400k because I can't see him doing anything in the club. And we're actually coming towards the episode, guys. Next episode, you guys are going to find out um, who, who, um, who the preseason friendlies are against, 
and how we do in them. But we are going to end off the episode by um, getting this read about our offer accepted. So yeah, as I said, guide Patrick McCarthy household, and they accept the offer for Reed Belt, and I can confirm that we do actually get him. And that is going to be awesome, guys. So yeah, um, he's absolute, he's an absolute tank of a player. I can confirm that too. So I'm really looking forward to this series. Drop 10 likes on the video if you enjoyed it. Hope you guys did, and thanks for watching.